We see from Luke chapter 1 that Zechariah and Elizabeth are upright people who observed all of God's commandments and regulations nearly without failure. They were people who dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's and had everything figured out. They They were faithful members of the community, and we also know they didn't have children. So the faithful priest Zechariah, he had a cup full of religious duties, and so he didn't have room for the disruption that happened next. A wild disruption that happened next. An angel suddenly appeared to him. Let's just pause for a second. I think when we hear things like that in church, we just say, yeah, another angel. But an angel appeared to him, right? This is not an everyday encounter. An angel appears to him while he's in basically the sanctuary, right? Anyone ever had that happen? Okay, so an angel, let's, let's, when we read scripture, I think we become numb to the extraordinary things that are going on. And so an angel appears to him and told him that his wife Elizabeth would give birth to a son who would be filled with the Holy Spirit and make way for the coming of the Messiah. Right? This is not an everyday happening. This is an extraordinary event. Now, Zechariah's response, you may think, is one of joy, right? He just found out this really great news and saw an angel. But his response was not full of joy. It was not full of elation. He instead said to an angel, how can you be so sure of this? To an angel, how can you be so sure of this? My wife and I, we are old. Well, the angel Gabriel wasn't so happy with Zechariah's response. And so what did he do? He struck Zechariah mute. Seems fair, right? Uh, Part of me wants to judge Zechariah and laugh at him for the way that he interacted with an angel. A message from God through an angel How can he respond in such a terrible way to the message from an angel that he would have a child who would play a special role in the becoming of the Messiah when he and his wife are old, no less? But here's the good news. is is This is not the end of the story for Zechariah. Because when we get to our story from today's passage, we see that God comes through on the promise God gave to Zechariah through the angel. Elizabeth, his wife, does indeed give birth to a baby boy while she and Zechariah are very old. And immediately when she gives birth, everyone says, well, you have to name this child after his good, upstanding father. The child must be named Zechariah. But Elizabeth knew that the child should be named John. The crowd pushing for him to be named uh, after his father went to Zechariah to say, Zechariah, you agree with us, right? This child should be named after you. But Zechariah was still mute. He was unable to talk because the angel had struck him mute. And so Zechariah, when he couldn't talk, he wrote down John. They said, the child should be named after you. And he said, no, John. Finally, finally, Zechariah is able to make room for what God had told him was coming. Finally, Zechariah is able to make some space for what God invited him into, that his baby boy would be named John and would make a way for the coming of the Messiah. Finally, Zechariah is able to empty himself out enough to make space for what God imagined. And when Zechariah finally made room, God really moved. Zechariah was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit and he began to prophesy. Many call this passage that I read a few moments ago from Luke chapter 1... The Benedictus. It's the first word in the Latin translation, which means to bless. And this fact leads many people to call this passage a psalm or a song. But really, this is more of a prophetic song. Because the whole song, this prophetic song, is full of allusions to the Hebrew Bible, which Zechariah knows so well because he was a priest, what we call the Old Testament. We see phrases from the Psalms that praise God for God's deliverance and and show gratitude to God for raising up a mighty Savior. We see rich language hearkening back to the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament about how Messiah will come like the rising sun in the darkness to guide our feet on the path of peace. And here's a really important fact here, is that the historical context here is vital. Zechariah's words about raising up a mighty savior, about a light in the darkness, about someone to guide us on the path of peace, these words aren't just spoken out in abstract ways or tossed out into a pristine vacuum. No, these words were spoken 
And Zechariah and Elizabeth and the rest of the people were under Roman occupation, were under Roman rule, and the vassal king Herod was ruling. 